guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Glenda of Style with Glenda K. Harrison, the community that's all about helping you become the master of your true style. For today's video, I'm sharing my nine tips that'll take your accessorizing game from dull to delightful. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, stay tuned for some time, then you know that I have a great love and passion for the art of accessorizing. And what I typically refer to accessories as is the icing. So let me explain. So you can have a plain sheet cake, just a sheet cake with no icing, no sprinkles, no nothing. And the sheet cake may taste perfectly fine. But here's the thing. If you add a beautiful decoration with icing and you add the sprinkles, the sheet cake becomes something more. So now it not only tastes good, but it looks good as well. So that's my philosophy when it comes to adding accessories to an outfit. The outfit may be perfectly fine, but when you add those added special details to it, it becomes something even more special. So those are the tips that I want to share with you today is how to take, how to up your game on your accessories. Here's the first tip. See your handbag as more than just utilitarian. And here's what I mean by that. I've heard a lot of women say that they carry the same handbag day in and day out regardless of what outfit they're wearing, regardless of the type of event they're attending or the occasion. That is, to me, an absolute no-no. So what happens then is when you do that or when you don't take the time to change out your handbag, your handbag just becomes this thing or this vessel that you use to carry your stuff in. When in fact, your handbag is an important part of your overall outfit and I want you to see it that way you change out your handbag to kind of coordinate with your outfit it then becomes a part of the complete ensemble of what you're wearing and so what I want to do is I want to show you some of the handbags now I want you to understand that I kind of like small handbags actually I love small handbags I'm not like a big handbag type of person so all the bags that I'm going to show you here are quite small and compact um, they're big enough for me to carry just my necessities my my wallet which is also small my keys um, lipstick maybe some hand sanitizer those types of things but um, like I said I see my handbag as more than just a vessel to carry my things in. My um, handbags are used to coordinate and to complete whatever outfit that I'm wearing. So I want to show you some of the handbags that I have. So um, this one here, this was a vintage one that I found on eBay. And see how it just, with this simple black dress, it just looks absolutely lovely against it. So, you know, um, I want you to, to remember that vintage is always an option. Don't rule it out. If you're looking for something new and interesting and not cookie cutter, please visit your vintage shops, okay? Another one that I have is my summer and spring bag. This is a wicker bag that I picked up at Target and I absolutely love it. It's like an old um, binocular or camera case style bag and it's it's lightweight and it's perfect for when I'm just wearing like a soft summer dress or a pair of shorts. It's not like a big heavy leather bag that totally just doesn't make sense if I'm wearing something light and frothy. I don't want to have a big leather bag with me. I want to have something that's also light and comfortable and easy to carry and doesn't weigh me down. So um, when the seasons change, I also want you to remember that your handbag should change as well. Another one that I have, now this one's 
brand new to my collection. I was just gifted this one by a crochet artist named Tracy Ambrose Wrap. She sent me this clutch purse that I absolutely love. Um, it's sturdy, so it's not flimsy. If I put my things in it, it's not going to flop around. And it just, you know, it has quite a bit capacity there. And it's just fun. So how I see wearing this is if I have on like just a pair of jeans, some my cowboy boots, or some boot with a big, you know, comfortable, cozy turtleneck sweater with this. I just think that is so cool. But you see where I'm going? It's like my thought process is going beyond, oh, let me just get my wallet and keys and head out the door with whatever purse that I already have. No, I, I give it a second thought and I consider my handbag. Now, another thing that is happening right now, an important trend in handbags, is changing out the strap. So this is my Brahmin handbag. And the Brahmin handbag comes with, of course, the strap that matches it. But what I chose to do is change out my strap with this one. I got this from Anthropology, and it's almost like a guitar strap. This one is embroidered with flowers, and it's just so fun to wear. Look at that, how it just adds that added element of interest to this simple black dress. So now it's just not me carrying just another black leather handbag. It's one that's been thought out and it coordinates with my outfit and it just looks super cool. So um, that's one thing I want you to consider. If you have a handbag where the strap can be changed, then I want you to consider that it's perfectly fine and it's fun and it's interesting to actually switch out your straps for something new. So now that was tip number one. See your handbag as more than just utilitarian. So now on to tip number two. Tip number two is let your sunnies or your sunglasses, whatever you want to call them, make a statement. So I, I'm going to tell you guys a secret or show you a secret. I absolutely love sunglasses. As you can see here, I've been collecting them for some time. I usually pick them up um, when I'm out and about, if I go to the beach and I see a vendor selling them, or um, if my favorite stores are having a sale on them, or I see a really cool and interesting pair at a vintage shop. So I've been collecting them for some time and I really love them because um, I see them as also an extension of my overall outfit. And I know a lot of people, they have a pair of sunglasses that they either keep in their car or they keep in their handbag and they use the same pair of sunglasses kind of, you know, over and over again. And I guess that's fine if you are um, a type of person where you are making like this your signature look, like say a Jackie O or an Edith Head, or there's certain people who had a specific sunglass that they wore time and time again, and it became their signature look. But for me, I like to play around with my sunglasses to kind of complement the outfit that I'm wearing. So what I want to do is I want to show you how with the simple black dress that I'm wearing, how just the change of sunglasses kind of gives me or what I'm wearing a whole and complete different look. So the first ones are just a pair of black ones. They have a clear... Um, Oh, gosh, what do you call that? Anyway, this part is clear on the side. And when I put them on, see, they kind of have like that very mysterious look to them. They look great with the black dress. Now let me change them again. 
So these, these are kind of like a mirrored look, the circled, I call them Prince sunglasses. Kind of like that rock and roll, the circle. These are really cool and fun, but they give the outfit a total different attitude, right? And now finally, a pair of aviators. So see, see how just the change of the glasses kind of changes the whole look of the outfit or the attitude that I'm trying to express through my outfit. So these to me are more fun and playful and even with the sunglasses that I would probably even change the way my, what my handbag is, what my accessories are, what my shoes are, the whole outfit comes into play when you consider all the elements involved. So tip number two is let your sunnies make a statement. Tip number three is probably the most playful of all the nine tips. It's embrace your hat head. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Okay, so if you haven't heard the term hat head, that means that the particular shape of your head seems to just work very well with hats. Now I know there are a lot of different styles and shapes of hats and granted not every head shape is going to go with every hat shape. But there are some people out there, my gosh, no matter what type of hat they put on their head, they just look fabulous. So if you happen to be one of those people who has a hat head, kudos to you. For myself, there is a particular shape of hat that works well with me. Usually the fedora, the rancher, the Cuban styles, those types of hats. So if you have a hat head, then I highly encourage you to embrace your hat head. Okay, on to tip number four. Put the matchy matchy rule on pause. So what do I mean by that? For my generation, we grew up believing that your shoes, your handbag, and your belt had to match. That's not so much the rule anymore. I guess for some instances, it is when you really are going for that super uber curated kind of ensemble dressing look like um, maybe if you're going to a black tie event and you want you have a, a beaded handbag and so you have beaded shoes and you know that type of thing. But for most day to day dressing, that rule doesn't really seem to apply anymore. And that's okay. But let me tell you what I believe the rule should be. It doesn't have to match, but it does have to make sense. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to show you a little demonstration. Okay. Say you're going to wear these cowboy boots. They're kind of like a deep burgundy brown gaiter. Now, you don't have to go out and look for a deep burgundy brown handbag and belt to match. But because the shoe is a southwestern, western look, it would look really cool and it would take your outfit up a notch if your belt and your handbag kind of coordinated or complemented the boots. So here's what I mean by that. So... If I wear this belt with it, which is kind of like a pony skin, it kind of has the same colors as the boot, but not exactly, but it still kind of complements it because it has like that southwestern look to it. So you have this belt and then as a handbag, instead of like I said, trying to hunt down that deep chocolate brown burgundy gator print handbag, you can carry a bag that now complements the three of them. And like I showed you earlier, the crocheted um, clutch handbag would work perfectly fine because it still has that kind of like rugged feel to it and the colors are complementing it and it just looks really cool and chic. It's like 
you thought about it, but you didn't overthink it. So that's what, to me, gives your outfit that level of interest and it takes it from that dull to delightful. So again, remember rule number four, put the matchy matchy rule on pause. Okay, butterflies, let's take a break. I'm gonna show you a little infomercial and then we'll be back with rules number five through nine. Stay tuned. I'm Glenda K. Harrison. As a young girl, my family would travel to Arkansas to visit my grandparents. During our visits, my grandmother would bring out a trunk that was filled with her jewelry and accessories. She would lovingly instruct her granddaughters to take what we love. I found the beautiful treasures in her trunk to be captivating. And at this very early age, I began to understand the transformative powers of jewelry and accessories to not only elevate an outfit, but to make the wear feel extra special. I created Bing so that you can experience the incredible magic I felt while selecting items from my grandmother's trunk of treasures. Each piece has been thoughtfully selected with you in mind and has been curated to harmonize with your unique fashion personality. It is my greatest hope with each piece you select, you'll immerse yourself in the beautiful simplicity of just being you. Welcome to being. We're back and we're on to tip number five, which is mix your metals like Miranda Priestly. Some of you are probably saying, who in the heck is Miranda Priestly? So I'm going to tell you who Miranda Priestly is. She is the fictitious mean boss character in The Devil Wears Prada. And some of you may not even noticed when you saw this movie, but her jewelry was simply amazing. The costume department for The Devil Wears Prada really did a superior job in showcasing the jewelry on the character Miranda Priestly. And one thing I noticed is that it wasn't a uniformity to it. Like she didn't just wear all gold or all silver or all rose gold. There were mixes of elements and metals and oh gosh, it was just wonderful. There was this one scene where she had on a chunky gray pearl necklace and then she had on gold earrings and then she had um, silver and gold bracelets on her arm so after i saw that movie i was just hooked on the idea of mixing metals to the point that for the grand opening of being which takes place on february 7th 2020 my first collection is Mix Your Metals. So you'll see when the grand opening hits all the beautiful pieces that I have selected that can be worn alone or they can be worn together as a mix and playful element of metals. So one thing I want to show you is here with a fistful of bangles is that you can wear them all together it's so fun to do so i have silver i have gold i have a little bit of rose gold and then it i don't know if it's showing up here on camera but i even have on one gold and one silver earring and then my necklace is a a, a brushed gold with a little pearl so I just want to show you that it is perfectly fine, perfectly chic, and perfectly cool and interesting to mix your metals. So that's rule number five. Number six, yes, your shoes are an accessory. I asked the question on Instagram, do you see your shoe as an accessory or not? 
and most people said yes i see my shoes as an accessories which is so good because there are some people out there who don't see it as that they just see it as um, something that is a necessity they put it on but they don't see them as a completion of an outfit oh my gosh please see them as a completion of an outfit because they are indeed an accessory they may be a utilitarian accessory but they are an accessory so i'm going to show you some of the shoes that i have and how i'm going to hold them up to my simple little black dress and you will see how um, as I talk you through it how they all can bring a different element to the outfit <clears throat> so the first one is this beautiful slingback pump by Isaac Mizrahi New York now these are so beautiful as you can see the detail in it it has like a little three dimension to it where it has these little raffia flowers with embroidered leaves that go up the side. And if I were to wear it with this dress right now, it would give it more of a dressier look as if maybe I was going to an evening event, an art opening, to a romantic dinner, something of sort. So. So you see now how that change of the shoe will change the whole look and idea of where I would wear this dress. So as I wore on the dig, I had this big frothy flowing um, taffeta dress with these white boots. So now I'm making the outfit more fashionable, playful, interesting, um, just kind of like more of what a fashionista would do, how she would step out with such a, a big dress and then anchor them with a white boot. The next shoe I want to show you is a simple little sandal in silver. So this would be like if I was going perhaps to a jazz event that was outdoors and perhaps it wasn't cool outside anymore or I was going to have dinner on a patio with friends and it was a little warm outside and so I have on these cute little sandals. So see how, as I talk you through the occasion, the event, the season, how your shoe would then change. And then also, the actual shoe that I had on when I went to try this dress on and bought it was my pair of high top Gola sneakers. So yeah, I love the dress so much, I kept it on and I continued my shopping at the outdoor plaza wearing my dress with my high top sneakers. I felt fun, I felt playful, I felt youthful. So yeah, so see where I'm going with that? See your shoes as more than just utilitarian. They are indeed an accessory and they can change the look, the mood, the feel of any outfit you're wearing. So don't get stuck just wearing the same type of shoe day in and day out because that's what you're used to. And go out there, explore the different shoes, try them on. When you have a particular look that you're going for, consider the shoe as well. Trust me when I say they definitely can take your outfit from dull to delightful. Seven, there's only one Iris FL. Know when you've reached your limit. And for those of you who don't know who the delightful Iris FL is, here she is. She is the queen of over the top accessorizing. And there are very few people who can rock it like she can. 
this is her signature style, her signature look. This is what she is known for. There is no way I would attempt to do what Iris Athel does. For one, it's simply not me. And number two, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to paddle it on that way and to look as incredible as she makes it look. So, here's the tip. Accessorizing, there is a skill to it. And you need to know when you've reached your limit. Unless you're an Iris Affeld or someone who loves that over the top and you do it superbly, then I would strongly suggest to know your limit. You don't have to have a, a huge accessory on every single part of your body. You don't have to have arm candy trailing up each arm. You don't have to have gigantic earrings, gigantic sunglasses, gigantic hat, gigantic necklace all at the same time. You don't have to do that. You can do it in a subtle way to where it's still beautiful. If we go back to the cake theory, then if you've seen cakes that have the icing detail and it's done elegantly and beautifully, it's not over the top, it's not overdone. So as you get out there and you're exploring and you're playing with accessorizing, see what your formula is. See when you've reached your limit. If something seems too much, take it off. You know, you don't, like I just said, you don't have to go out the door with every single part of your body covered in an accessory. My general rule of thumb is if I'm trying to make a statement, say with my arms, then I will let my arm candy make the statement and I'll tone down my earrings. If there's a ring that I have on display and it's a huge statement ring, then I will let that statement ring stand out. So you see where I'm going? You don't have to do the over the top to make it look delightful. So rule number seven, there's only one Iris Affel. On to tip number eight. Get out of the jewelry rut. Okay, this is sensitive, I know. Some of us have grown to love the silver hoop earrings that were passed down to us from the aunt that we loved. That's perfectly fine. As a woman who has jewelry from her grandmothers and her mother, I understand the connection that we have with those beautiful pieces that were passed down to us. In this case, since we're talking about upping the ante in our accessorizing game, it's okay if you set them aside and not wear them day after day. So for myself, as an example, I love hoop earrings. I absolutely love them. I think they're fun. They're playful. They could go to a variety of events. But what I don't do is I don't wear the same hoop earrings day after day. I change them out. There's so many different variances on hoops. There's different tones and shapes and oh my gosh, it just goes on and on and on. So what I'm saying is if you're a person who loves hoops, you don't have to wear the same hoops day after day. Play around with your hoops. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So, like I said, I'm wearing one gold and one silver hoop. That's playful. That's fun. People may look at me and say, oh, poor dear. She must have got dressed in the dark or she was sleepy. She doesn't realize she has on mixed match earrings. Well, yes, I do. So that's what's kind of fun, right? People may be looking at me, but inside I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing. I also want to show you some of the different styles of hoop earrings that are out there. Just to give you an idea with any type of... I'm talking hoops because I love hoops, but if you love pearls, if you love studs, if you love um, dangles, whatever it is that you like, 
you can find different variances. You don't have to wear the same earrings day after day after day. So, like, here's a hoop. These are hoops, right? Those are hoops. And then I have these hoops here. And then I have these hoops. And then I have these hoops. So I have a jewelry box full of hoops. So, and I don't just wear hoops. I wear, you know, I wear studs. I wear earrings that dangle. I wear all sorts of different types of earrings to complement whatever outfit I'm wearing because that's the goal, right? The whole idea of this video is to show how we can take our accessorizing game from dull to delightful. So for tip number eight is to get out of the jewelry rut. All right, butterflies, we finally made it to tip number nine. Can you guess what it is? Know your fashion personality. You're probably saying, what does that have to do with taking my accessorizing game from dull to delightful? Because accessorizing is a part of your fashion personality. If you haven't taken my fashion personality assessment, I'm going to attach it in this video for you to do so. It's very enlightening. It will show you so much about yourself and you'll walk away with it from it with a better understanding of why you're attracted to certain things, um, um, why you prefer to wear um, red lipstick or why you're attracted to hoop earrings, whatever. The fashion personality assessment takes many ideals and then it brings it together so that you can understand what your personality is. And that personality is more than just your, your apparel. It also has to do with your accessories and your lifestyle and all of those types of things that come together to create uniformity in your personal style. So take the fashion personality assessment, understand and know who you are. If you have any questions, please, I encourage you to drop me an email or send me a message, connect with me on social media, ask me questions. I, I love answering them for you. So that is tip number nine. Know your fashion personality. That is crucial. That is uber important. And if you know that, then the other tips, one through eight, will fall in line so much easier. That's it, friends. That is the nine tips that'll take your accessorizing game from dull to delightful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below in this video. And also hit that little bell so that you'll get a reminder every time I post a new video. And be sure to subscribe to Style with Glenda K. Harrison on YouTube and also the website. So I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye for now.